Good morning. Kind of looks like my hair, even though I know it's not. It's like starting to like. Anyway, um, I am Joshua Pearsall, and no one cares about that. Welcome to Practical Christian Lessons. We are going to be going to Wisdom of Sirach through Wisdom of Sirach chapter twenty-four. Um, I know that today is the twenty-fifth when I'm recording this of April. Um, so if you're watching this, the UMC is having its general conference right now, and I believe it's going over two weeks. Uh, my my prayers for that is repentance and returning to the orthodox teachings of the faith and that those who are there who are sticking to the orthodox teachings of the faith will, will stand up, stay strong, and not back down on what is right. So prayers for that. Um, I'm not <laughs> convinced that's going to happen at this UMC conference, unfortunately, um, but God can work miracles. You never know what's going to happen. Uh, for anyone who's wondering, no, I am not part of the United Methodist. Um, if, it, if that wasn't made obvious just now. Um, so, prayers for that going on. Wisdom of Sirach, chapter 24. And I realized, the mic was in the wrong spot, my apologies. Wisdom will praise herself, and in the midst of her people she will boast. In the assembly of the Most High she will open her mouth, and boast in the presence of his host. I came forth from the mouth of the Most High, and covered the earth like a mist. I pitched my tent in the high places, and my throne on the pillar of cloud. I alone encircle the ring of heaven, and I walk in the de depth of the abyss. In the waves of the sea, and all the earth, and in every people and nation, I have gained a possession. With all of these, I have sought a place to rest. In what inheritance will I lodge? Then the Creator of all things commanded me, and he who created me gave me a place to live. He said, Pitch your tent in Jacob, and receive an inheritance in Israel. Before the age, he created me from the beginning, and in the age to come, I will not cease. For anyone who's wondering, that's like one of the most clear Proverbs 8 references I've ever, I've ever read. Uh, I serve before him in his holy tabernacle. Therefore, I am established in Zion. In the beloved city, likewise, he gives me rest. And my authority is in Jerusalem. I am firmly rooted among an honored people, among the Lord's portion, his inheritance. Like a cedar tree, I was raised on high in Lebanon, like a cypress tree in the mountains of Hermon. I was exalted like a palm tree in En Gidi, and like rose bushes in Jericho. I was exalted like a beautiful olive tree in the plain, and grew tall like a plane tree. I gave forth the fragrance of aromatic spices, like cinnamon and camel thorn, and I spread a fragrance like choice myrrh, and like galbanum, onyx, and oil of myrrh, and like the fragrance of frankincense in the tabernacle. I spread forth my branches like a terebinth tree, and my branches were glory and grace. I yield grace like a vine, and my flowers produce the fruit of glory and riches. I am the mother of fair love and fear and knowledge and holy hope. I, therefore, being eternal, am given to all my children who are named by him. Come to me, you who desire me, and take your fill of my fruits. For the remembrance of me is sweeter than honey, and my inheritance is sweeter than the honeycomb. Those who eat me will hunger for more, and those who drink me will thirst for more. He who obeys me will not be put to shame. And those who work with me will not sin. All this is the book of the covenant of the Most High God, the law Moses commanded us, the inheritance of the congregations of Jacob. Faint not to be strong in the Lord, that he may confirm you. Cleave unto him, for the Lord Almighty is God alone, and beside him there is no other Savior. This law fills men with wisdom, like the Pishon and the Tigris at the time of first fruits. And it fills them with understanding, like the Euphrates and the Jordan at the time of harvest. This loss shines forth instruction like light, like the Gehan in the days of vintage, as the first men did not know wisdom perfectly. So the last men has not searched out her depths. For her, th for, for her thoughts are deeper than the sea, and her counsel than the great abyss. I went forth like a canal from a river, and like an aqueduct into a garden. I said, I will water my garden, and drench the garden beds, and behold, my canal became a river, and my river became a sea. I will yet make instructions shine like the morning, and I will make it shine far away. I will yet pour forth teaching like prophecy, and I will leave, leave it behind for future 
generations. As you can see, I have not labored for myself alone, but for all who seek wisdom. That is Wisdom of Sirach 24. And that is a beautiful exhortation of wisdom. Um, to anyone who's wondering what this mother wisdom figure is, if you haven't read Proverbs, go read Proverbs. You'll, you'll get the, the imagery there. And that is just such a clear... <laughs> So many, so many allusions to Proverbs, as is really all throughout this text. Um, back on the Proverbs bent here at Practical Christian Lessons. But, and I mean, I did just read like half of it yesterday, but Psalm 119, um, I had a lot of downtime yesterday. And it's just also the sort of exhortation on meditating, on focusing on the Word of God, in this case, on wisdom. But as wisdom itself, Peter said, the law Moses God commanded us. And as I destroy this book down here, um, right, the psalmist in 119 regularly talks about the Lord's commandments, the Lord's ways, the Lord's word is life and protection and joy um, all throughout the psalm. And I, I'm getting that exact idea here, <laughs> reading reading Zerach 24. Um, one thing that is interesting is... His explicit call on the deep. Um, let me. This might just be the King James. In Exodus 20, verse. Nope, this says water under the earth. My phone is not muted. My apologies. Um, but the deep, and you see this in a lot of Second Temple literature, is this idea of the place where the where evil is, where evil comes from, where the demons dwell. Um, I'm just turning my phone down so we don't get that background sound again. That it is this place of darkness. Um, in, in the sort of old world map that we get from some, some renderings is, here's the earth, heaven's above us, in space, and then you have the sea, and then below that, below the foundations of the world, like pillars that hold up the earth around the sea, you have the deep, which is like the deep, deep ocean. Um, I guess you could say the bottom of the ocean. Uh, though they probably characterize it as an endless deep where the demons and these other evil forces just kind of spew forth out of um and there's a lot of pointing to that in the in the matthew um not matthew it is in matthew i think where jesus sends the demons into the pigs and then the pigs run into the deep it doesn't say the sea um if you the greek it's the deep so it's this not idea of jesus comes he goes into this place that is unclean and this, um, this is where, this is why I like devotional literature. It takes you into some interesting places. He comes into the Gentile land, this unclean place, and finds a possessed man, so double unclean. Um, and then he casts the unclean spirit, the demon, into the herd of pigs. It's the epitome, right? An unclean animal, and then cast it into the deep. This idea of, of Christ is coming in, and, this, and a wisdom is often associated with Christ in a lot of Christian literature you'll read, rightfully so, um, where Christ comes into this place that is unclean and casts out the uncleanness. He takes away that which is unclean and makes it holy. He sends the the evil back to where it came from, this this power, um, all right? And it's one of the psalmist who said, where, where, where can I go that you are not there? Um, and that's, that's sort of the same idea that I'm getting reading this text, at least in my head. I'm not saying this is like a scholarly, academic, reading through and like drawing connections. This is just me as I'm having thoughts and reflections here. That's what devotional literature is, the way I use it here on Practical Christian Lessons. So there you go. Um, take that today, how Christ comes in into us as well and cleanses us and makes us holy. He makes us whole again. He, make, he makes us righteous and takes away our past stains and our past sins and forgives those that come in after and keeps us clean. It's a beautiful, beautiful thought and imagery there. You guys have a wonderful day. God bless.